So far, I have learned how to solve problems similar to the one below. I have a right triangle, I have an angle, I have one of my uh, three sides of my triangle, and I'm trying to find one of the missing sides. So with right triangles, as long as you know an angle and a side, you will be able to find a missing side, uh, just like we, we've been doing uh, in the problems before. What kind of problems will I be able to solve after this lesson? So the difference is that now your unknown is going to be an angle. Uh, so now the big question is, if I have a right triangle and I know what two of my three sides are, how exactly can I find this angle? So with right triangles, as long as you know two sides, you will be able to find a missing angle. Uh, now, in order to be able to understand how this works, we need to do a quick little review of how functions work and how inverse functions work. So let's say uh, that I have a domain and range here. So let me draw some circles. So that's gonna be my domain. And let me just copy this thing. And that's gonna be my range. And let's label these. So this will be my set of inputs or my set of my domain values um, or my independent uh, variable over here. And these are gonna be my outputs or the values that are gonna be part of my range. And let's just work with a very uh, nice, easy function. If I have f of x is equal to x plus one, so let's plug in some different numbers here. Let's say I run five through this function. So f of five would be five plus one. So five is gonna get mapped to the number six. Uh, 11, if I do f of 11, that's 11 plus one, that's going to be 12, and we'll do one more here. If I do f of negative four, negative four plus one uh, would be negative three. So now my next question is, well, how do I go back? You know, what, what do I do to the six to send that back to this input of five? How do I go from 12 to 11? How do I go from negative three to negative four? And the answer involves using your inverse function. Uh, so what is the inverse function? Uh, of the function f of x equals x plus one, well, I'd have to take my value and subtract one to go back to what I started with. So my inverse function, f inverse of x, would just be x minus one, and notice that works with all these values. Six minus one would give me five, 12 minus one would give me 11, negative three minus one would give me negative four. Now, let's bring this up to speed and let's use this idea with our uh, sine and cosine functions. So let's clear this out. Okay, and now I am just going to let my function, and actually here we'll write it in black, my function f of x is just going to be equal to the sine of x. All right, uh, so can we think of some values that would work here where you know I plug in a certain number and then I do the sign of that number and I know exactly what the output is. Um, and you could of course use a calculator to get a bunch of values, but uh, let's use our, uh, let's review our special right triangles and use that idea. So let me draw a right triangle here for you. So let me draw a segment there. And I'll draw one there. And actually, let's draw two different right triangles here. And these are not going to be drawn to scale, but they will be good enough to suit our purposes here. And there's my second right triangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label both of these. So I'm drawing right triangles, and there's my right angle. So let's label those. Those are 90 degrees. And this triangle over here is going to be a 45, 45, 90. And this triangle here is going to be a 30, 60, 90. Now, let's figure out uh, what numbers would work here. And if you remember from your special right triangles, you'll know that for every one unit that I have that's across from my angle that's 45 degrees, my hypotenuse is just going to be root 2 times that value. 
with my 30, 60, 90. For every one unit that I have across from my 30, I'm gonna double that number, and that's what I'm gonna have across from my 90, or from my hypotenuse here. And across from my 60 is always going to be the square root of three. And now that I have these special right triangles drawn, I can easily find, for example, what the sine of 30 is. And the sine of 30 would be your opposite over your hypotenuse. So the sine of 30 should be 1 half. And you can, of course, verify that in your calculator. Just type in sine of 30, and it'll probably give you the decimal form with the 0 0.5, which is 1 half. Uh, make sure your calculator is in degree mode and not in radian mode. That's one situation where it, this would not work out for you. You've got to make sure your calculator is in the right mode. Uh, now let's plug in another one, the sine of 45. So with respect to my 45 here, I'm going to do opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be 1 over the square root of 2. And I don't like having that radical in the denominator, so let's rationalize this real quick. This would be root 2 over root 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So the uh, sine of 45 would be root 2 over 2. And let's get this in decimal form just so we can see it in that way as well. So I am just going to do the square root of 2. And we're going to divide that by 2. And it looks like I'm at about 0.71 if I was rounding to the nearest hundredth. All right, so that's about 0.71. So let's put in approximately 0.71 on that. And we can do one more here, 60. Uh, if I want to know what is the sine of 60, so here's my 60-degree angle opposite over hypotenuse. This one would be root 3 over 2, which is about what? So once again, let's jump to my calculator. This time I'm going to type in the square root of 3 divided by 2, and it looks like I'm at about 0.87 if I was rounding to the nearest hundredth. <clears throat> so let's fill that in. Okay. Now I want to be able to go backwards. Okay, so let's just say for a second here that I didn't know what this angle was or this angle here, okay, but I had these sides. And let's say I wanted to know what this angle was up here. So we'll just put a question mark right here. Well, I would know that the sine of that angle would be opposite of hypotenuse. So the sine of that question mark is equal to one half. So what number would I have to plug in so that I take the sine of that angle and get one half? Or using my inverse idea, you know, I wanna basically go back. I wanna go backwards here. I wanna plug this number into some function and be able to spit out this number so that I can find it. And the inverse, so before we had a much easier function, we just had x plus 1, and we knew the inverse was x minus 1. Well, what is the inverse of the sine of x? And the answer is that it's just the inverse sine. Okay, and whenever they notate this, you're going to see this little negative 1 here. That is not an exponent. That is meant to be the inverse of sine, inverse sine of x. And if I do the inverse sine of 1 half, that should give me 30. So let's see that happen with my calculator here. So let me pull up my calculator. And on these calculators, uh, this is the sine button. There's my SIN. might be a little bit hard to see, so let me move that forward. And right above it in blue is the inverse sine. So I'm going to hit second, and then that sine button. Okay, and I'm going to evaluate this at one half. So I'm going to do the inverse sine of one half, hit equals, and there's my answer. There's my 30. So then I know what that my question mark right here, this angle absolutely has to be 30 degrees. And this will work with all of these, and you can test this out. If I do the inverse sine of root 2 over 2, that's going to give me 45. If I do the inverse sine of root 3 over 2, that's going to give me 60. So for any right triangle, as long as I know what two of my sides are, I can always 
um, plug in the ratio of the sides to get the angle. So in my original function, I had angle values over here. So this was my angle measure. And whenever I plug that into the function, I got an output that was a ratio of sides. Now, if I don't know the angle, I'm going to do the inverse of the ratio of sides, and that will give me the angle measure. Now, I've been focusing on sine here, but you know, your function, you can work with the cosine of x. And of course, the inverse would be the inverse cosine. And you can also work with the tangent of x. And of course, the inverse would be the inverse tangent. So make sure that you understand one more thing here. If, if you have the sine of some angle equals one half and you want to find the angle, you need to do the inverse sine of the ratio of sides, the inverse sine of one half, and then that will give you the missing angle.